Global Health Photography Ethics for Field Epidemiology Training Programs, Module 1, Ethics, Images, and TeffyNet. I'm your host, Aubrey P. Graham, and my contact is aubreygram at gmail.com. Please note that all images used in these six modules, unless otherwise indicated, were produced by myself. I hold the copyright to the images. Photographs cannot be reproduced, copied, shared, or otherwise repurposed without my consent. For questions on how to use any of the images shown here in other contexts, please email me at aubreygram at gmail.com. The goals and structure of this course are multiple. This course aims to, overarchingly, improve photographic skills. This includes improving how one creates photographs, improving composition within the images, thinking through lighting, lighting challenges and solutions, understanding how images create a photographic narrative, and working to best structure that narrative in the manner that is ethical for the context, working through and understanding good practices or best practices for storage and photographic management, and understanding how to improve and write better captions. Further, this course aims to improve ethical epidemiological image engagements through issues such as consent, understanding power dynamics in the creation of the photograph as well as in the use of the photograph, Understanding ethics, again, in the image creation itself in that period and that process of making the photos. Also in editing photographs, in writing captions, and in using the images in publications and other uses. And this is me. I'm your narrator, Aubrey Graham. I have a doctorate in anthropology from Emory University and am the post Doctoral Interdisciplinary Teaching Fellow at the University um, Institute for the Liberal Arts at Emory. My research is focused on humanitarian photography and global health photography and the ethics surrounding that, predominantly within the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So many of the photographs that you will see were taken around the world by myself, but many of them are focused in the Eastern DRC. I'm a freelance photographer and media consultant. And as I said, I work in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and predominantly in Sub-Saharan Africa. And yet again, that contact is my email right there on the screen at the bottom. So why do visual representations matter? And why do they matter for TEFINET? So TEFINET is ever expanding. With more than 14,000 graduates and 71 member programs globally, thousands of photographs are taken annually. So these images are used for TEFINET in a, in a number of different ways, as you see here um, in a screenshot from TEFINET's Facebook um, or TEFINET's website. So TEFINET's visual goal is to use visually compelling medium of photography to increase visibility and understanding of field epidemiology and its importance to global health security. TEFINET maintains a database of photographs submitted by FETP trainees and graduates for use in communications materials designed to explain and promote the work of FETPs and of TEFINET. And importantly, the common uses of TEFINET images include social media graphics, digital and print publications, informational materials uh, such as flyers, presentations, and videos. Um, but TEFINET overall prioritizes vibrant, well-composed images that show ethical engagement in the field, engage equitable power dynamics between participants and epidemiologists, and show the action and impact of the FETP programs. This webinar and the five modules that follow it will help you learn how to better create such photographs. Most of the images TEFINET has from FETP trainees and graduates were obtained through photo contests. These are stored in their Flickr gallery, and you'll see the link right there at flickr.com slash photo slash TEFINET. And TEFINET has um, an important ethical engagement where it asks all photo contest entrants to submit a consent form so that they can use their images. This form asks the entrants to acknowledge that their photographs were obtained ethically. And again, here are some of the uses. So you'll see here that we're on TeffyNet's Facebook page. We have a screen grab of that. And you can see a handful of the photographs that have been submitted through these photo contests. They are bright, they're vibrant, and they show interaction between the participants um, and the trainees. 
And as you'll see there, there's a lot of images there. You've got 741 images on the timeline itself. So it is important to understand both how to create these images ethically with those 14,000 graduates and also how to use them ethically. Again, this webinar helps you learn how to do that. So related to TEFINET, how FETPs use images is quite similar. So FETPs rely on visuals to help tell stories about their work to relevant stakeholders. We'll talk a lot about the visual narrative in the next module. Programs use these photographs taken by their trainees or graduates in presentations, posters, flyers, publications, websites, videos, and other miscellaneous communications material. These images are also used on social media, at conferences, in articles, and for donors, where the visuals help to show the impact, show the faces, and help explain the work completed. FETPs differ in their photographic content based on the programs and regional cultural norms, and will deal with those cultural norms and the ethics surrounding those throughout these webinars. So what are visual ethics and why do they matter? So within global health, global health ethics is defined as by, well, by Pinto and Upshar as avoiding the risks of doing harm and encouraging individuals to do what is best given a particular set of circumstances and constraints. So given the process of creating photographs, this is about trying to figure out how to work with those circumstances and constraints in which images are created, edited, and published to avoid doing harm and encourage individuals to do what is best in those situations. Images and ethics come into play here because engaging ethics and equitable action that avoids harm and encourages best practice throughout the process of photography is a critical part of media and of sharing both the process and the results of epidemiological action and both what FETPs do as well as the goals of TEFINET. So I've mentioned a couple times that photography is a process. So what does this mean? This means that photographs are more than just objects. They're not just the two-dimensional thing that you see printed out in front of you. In fact, they're a set of relationships because from the moment that one picks up a camera to the moment that one publishes a photograph, different relationships are shaped around the camera itself and around the images. So these, there are ethics that apply um, at various points in this chain. So you'll see on the left, so ethics apply within the stage of planning, of thinking about how to make equitable ethical images that will do and encourage others to do their best given the constraints and circumstances. The ethics apply in the production of the image, and that's one of the sections that we're really going to hone in on, um, is how to be ethical in the creation of these images in the field. Then there's ethics in the selection of images. Is the image representative? Is it ethical? Is it accurate? Um, and then there's also ethics in the publication section, which we will finish up with in modules five and six. So again, you'll see this all written on the right, but the image ethics apply in the image assignments or the moment the images, the the images that are needed are identified, the moment that the photograph is created, the moment that the image is selected for editing and publication, and that also the moments that those images are ignored or chosen not to be important. And we'll go over that a little later. As the photo is edited, ethics also come into play. They come into play with the caption and the text that accompanies that photograph and the way in which the image is published and circulated. So the next slide um, is going to have a lot on it, but we'll break it down relatively slowly. So here we have another way of thinking about the process of photography. So starting at the very left of this green arc, you have this idea of the assignment. So what is the idea of the image or the assignment? And how do we think through that ethically? How do we come up with an equitable um, idea for photography that's going to show accurate work? Then you have who is, you know, questions around who is the anticipated audience and what are the goals of that photograph? Do the goals of the photograph line up with the photograph that's being taken? Then you have the agency planning or the FETP or TEFINET planning and consultation with either the person who is taking the photograph, the photographer, or the team participants um, and trainees that are creating the images. 
As we move forward in time, this arc is a bit of a time arc, you have the photographer's expectations and actions and interactions in the field. And then all the way up at the top, you have that decisive moment in which the photograph is captured, one where we actually click the shutter and interact with the subject. And then later on, you have going back through the card or the film, you have the selection of which images are worthy of sending forward to someone else or to editing. And then we have thinking through this process of cropping the images and what color or what um, editing tools we use to enhance the images as opposed to changing them. Finally, you have captioning and creating a consistency of the narrative um, and doing our best to integrate the image with the text in the most accurate and representative way, as well as using it responsibly in contexts that make the most sense given the situation of production. All of these different factors on this really busy slide are spaces in which ethics come into play within the image making process. If we go back to the center, it involves humans across the board. You have the photographer, you have the subjects in the photograph, you have the local partners and facilitators that are helping with the activity or with the photograph itself. You have the project team, the trainees, the staff, and you have everyone who has come out to watch all of the bystanders. And within this, you have issues of consent, power dynamics, the interactions with the image process, the interactions with the images in the past, so recognition of images that have been taken before and recognizing whether those images are indeed ethical and should be reproduced when you're taking photos in the present, and the expectation of the image for, for the photographer, for the agency, and the subject, because the expectations of what one thinks the photograph will do when it is taken are not always the same for the person behind the camera as it is in the, for the person in front of the camera as it is for the person who will be publishing that after it has been submitted for a photo contest. Um, so in order to be as ethical as possible, we need to keep all of these different points of ethical interaction in mind and keep in mind that ethics and the expectations and the consent and the way in which the photograph is taken is complicated. And that this webinar and the set of webinars that will follow will give you a set of guidelines and questions and thought processes to work with, but it won't be a straightforward, here are the rules that you have to follow. In many ways, you will have to trust your gut and work through your own personal grappling with the ethics and the images to best create images that are representative, accurate, kind, and equitable. So here's what's up next. The upcoming module is on composition, and that's going to be Photographic Ethics Mod Module 2, Composition for Compelling Ethical Images.